so who am I? What do I believe? Um, those questions are so interesting because, like, at the center of those questions, the answers have changed throughout my life almost constantly. Like, I... I've never really felt comfortable with just staying in place in my life. I've always been moving and changing and growing and sometimes going backwards as a person because, you know, that's just what people do. They don't always grow in the right ways and, you know, it's important to keep that in mind. Change is not always a good thing, but, I mean, as long as you're not settling on the bad stuff, then... You know, it's it's gonna work out. But I mean, I believe that there is a collective subconscious that connects people on the inside to each other. I believe that there is a guiding force out in the universe that some might consider a god that is sort of a I don't know. It, it's it feels benevolent to me when I when I've touched it, and this is a new thing to me. I I actually considered myself an atheist for many years. I believed in the unseen world because I've seen enough stuff out there. I've seen enough of the unseen to know that it's there. But I really didn't think there was a god um, until probably about December of two thousand eight which, as the time of this recording, is only about half a year ago, um, it was a big change for me. I've been off on a sort of a vision quest or a spirit journey for the last year. I had sort of come to a place in my life where I felt like I was trapped a little bit by some things and I was very unhappy with where my life was headed even though everything seemed on the outside to most people that my life was going very well and I was being given wonderful like opportunities from people and great great you know humans were entering my life I still f there was something wrong I, I felt disconnected from everything or from my own self and it was in a way that I've never really been able to kind of define but that's kind of the, you know, that's the realm of the unseen. Is It's really hard to put words to it. Um, hence art, really. Um, I think so many artists write about the unseen, and even if they don't know they are. I mean, they're, there's only a couple stories that have been written in human culture, and, and all the other cultures too, but I'm this is human culture I'm talking about. There's only a couple stories that have been written and, and they're just sort of the same couple, you know, sort of primal individualists have been given the same different masks, you know, throughout all of fiction to sort of wear and they, they go about and... I mean, some would say there's only three stories and that would be man versus God, man versus man, and man versus self but I I don't I, I understand what they're saying there and that that is essentially true for fiction but I, I'm, I'm talking about something different I'm talking about something more specific and I don't know if I can define it directly but that was a big part of what I've been dealing with on my spirit journey um, But that's all kind of relative stuff. I don't know how much that really defines who I am. That's more kind of me defining how I see my world. I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was born in 1975. I was definitely a weirdo child of the 80s. Um, I liked stuffed animals and I thought Transformers were cool when I was a kid, and I really liked, I thought My Little Ponies were kind of cute, and I liked 
playing with Lego a lot. I mean, I drew, I, I, you know, I lived in a town of 900 people for the time that I was seven until I was 15, and there were really no kids my age in town, and the, I mean, there was a couple near my age, but they were really hard to relate to, and I don't know, we just, we just didn't really, didn't really vibe well, and I think a lot of it was me, but at the same time, like, it doesn't really matter. I just had to entertain myself. I had to sort of figure out, you know, my, my mom was a wonderful mother. She tried very hard. She was a hard working mom, but that was the thing. She was a working mom. She, she was, she was not really there for me. And I mean, she took care of me and, and fed me and clothed me essentially. But I mean, I, I love my mom. I really do. But I mean, I sort of feel like I had to find my own way in the world. I mean, she wasn't offering a whole lot of wisdom at me. And what I learned by watching how she interacted with the world was that the world was kind of an awful place, that, that it was filled with nasty people who were trying to take advantage of you or who didn't, you know, really treat other people very well. And it made me really afraid of, like, just everybody. And so I was kind of in my shell for a long time because of these factors. And um, my stepfather that she had married when I was seven was abusive and that changed me also. But I mean, that was more of a just... I, I don't know, he was just not a very nice person. He thought I was lazy, he, you know, just treated me like I was a useless individual. And and I, I, I think that I've proven that I'm not. And, you know, I wonder how much of my life is really just sort of developed off of trying to prove who I'm not to people. But, specifically my mom and stepdad or whoever, but my real biological father went to prison uh, a couple months before I was born. Um, I've only seen him a couple times. I saw him for the first time when I was four. It's one of my earliest memories. Um, I traveled up to Green Bay, Wisconsin, the prison there, and I remember the white room with the orange trim and seeing him come out of the door with the cinder block walls behind it, and I'm really glad that he's there. And I think that he has gone back to prison three or four times. He's a repeat offender. He belongs there. He's not a very good person. <laughs> and everything I've seen about him tells me that I am so lucky that he has not been a part of my life. And so for the most part, I got to raise myself. And I'm a kind of a weird kid because of it. But I, I really, really like that I've been able to um, sort of I'm really proud of kind of the person that I've built out of myself because I feel like I've I've actually made a pretty interesting life from nothing. I mean, I, I wasn't really given anything. I, my family doesn't have money. We don't have land. We don't have power. We don't have wisdom. We don't have uh, humor, really. <laughs> but, you know, this is... Um, the world I'm living in now is kind of a dream for me, and it's kind of beautiful, and I'm very glad that I'm here. So I just wanted to sort of share. I'll be at the door in a second. <laughs> All right, so anyways, um, that's Adam, and he's here to pick me up. So I will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>